Puerto Rico. Very well. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. Nice to have your presence here this evening, both of you. Arthur. Uh, oh, Arthur. Hi, Arthur. I sign in, so I forgot to sign in, but I'd like to make some public comments. Please. Uh, as everybody knows, I'm a representative on Region H and agreed every time we have our quarterly meeting to come back to this board and give this board an update of what took place. So we did have, we kicked off season 23 and we had our first quarterly meeting. We have two key timelines for the planning group to report back to the Texas Water Development Board. First timeline is going to be July 14th. We have to reaffirm or adjust or modify our non-population demands for water. Non, for example, what is a non-population water demand? That's for crops, cattle, manufacturing, all non-people uh, requirements for water. So working with our consulting firm, we're working on the projections. What we're seeing initially is there's some shifting of non-population demand in certain counties, but it's not going away. So it doesn't go down to zero. It shifts over into people's demands. As most of the counties in Region H, there's clear indications that growth for the next 50 plus years is on the rise. And we'll get to some of those statistics We'll talk a little bit about Montgomery County. Population demand, we have to get back by mid-August to the Texas Water Development Board. So those population demands are being worked on. We just got um, an update from the Texas Water Development Board, just released at the end of January. So our consultant is in the process of studying those. I'm going to bring that information back to the planning group. So, for example, let's talk population. Montgomery County, where we all live. But in 2022, we were about 624,000 people. There's a clear indication from the statistics, and the statistics come from a number of different sources, that by 2030, which is basically around the corner, we will probably be about six, uh, 785,000 people in this county alone. And if we go out to 2050, we'll be at a million two, according to the statistics. And if we go out to where we're planning for 2080, we'll be just over two million people in this county. So this is a growth county, and most of the counties in Region H clearly indicate on population data and demand for water, we're, we're in a growth period and continue to be in a growth period. This population data that came back to us all the way out to 21 by some organizations. So we're taking a look at that. I think a key takeaway is it's great to have growth, but can we support it? Is it sustainable? And we all know, because this is our business here, water. So where are the sources for water and how do you get the water? Even if you find it above ground, how do you get it to where the people need it? And also too, you have to take a look at what's below the surface. Can we continue to pump at the rates we're pumping below the surface? without having a major impact to subsidence. What are we going to do on conservation? There's clear indications we're going to have to take plans for conservation. Whatever we did today and this organization, we've been successful. We have to even do better going forward. What we're going to do is put the data onto Region H's um, file on the G drive. We also got a presentation from the um, uh, both the Fort Bend subsidence district and Harris Galveston subsidence dif district. They did some studies basically on population and where's the demand for water and what's the impact of subsidence. So we really want you to have that data because it's good data. It's very detailed. One thing I'm finding out, some of you guys have been in planning before, there's plenty of data. It takes time to study it. What does it mean? How is it integrated? Our next meeting is going to be February the 3rd, and probably in the summertime, we may have some special meetings so we can approve, approve the uh, projections that we have to tender to the Texas Water Development Board. I think in summary, what takeaways that I bring from this planning group is <laughs> planning is key, and this organization's demonstrated that. We're lucky we have the partner we do with San Jacinto River Authority, and we've done a lot of good planning here. We have an important milestone coming up with a vote here in February at the MUDS, 
and a trustee in March on this uh, waste treatment plant. Growth is good. Where is it going to come from? Or can growth be supported? We know one of our friends next to us, uh, uh, city, I put a moratorium on growth because they have issues with their water plant. They can't sustain growth because they have to upgrade the plant. So these are important things. We're looking at water demand, but maybe even more important, where's the water supply? And if we locate the water supply, what's it gonna cost to get to the people? And we know further out we go, it's gonna be more expensive to get the water in. I think this organization took a good step by approving the reservation <laughs> for the Trinity River. Smart move, good forward looking move for our residents that are here today and really the future. And conservation is going to be important. I think what you learn also on a planning group that there's no one solution. They're all integrated. The question is, what weight do you put on each element to get to where you want to go in a plan? And a plan is a plan. Execution is important. But I think we're fortunate in, in this state. We have 16 regions that work on this planning, uploaded to the Texas Water Development Board, and be come part of the Texas overall plan. I think Texas is a model for the rest of the country of how to do planning for not only today, but the future. So I know we're in public comments and we can't entertain questions. I hope in the future we we're actually on a March agenda to provide opportunities to ask questions. But I'm proud to be your representative on the Texas on Region H and thank you very much for your support. Thank you. Thank you. One question before you go. You said the next meeting was February 3rd. Uh, the next meeting is May, May the 3rd. Sorry. May the 3rd. OK. I wondered. I thought I thought to myself, will they meet annually? You know, no. OK, not a question, but clarification. Can you clarify exactly how many counties are in this region? In, in this region H, there's uh, 14 to 15 counties in this region H, and it's a composition of both industry water utility districts, mud districts, cities, small business has representative, which is good to have small business there. And uh, this is the composition. There's 26 members on Region H. Thank you, Arthur. Okay. You. Excellent report. Thanks. Okay, we now have the uh, consent agenda. Do we have any uh, need for questions or Comments, discussion about items four, five, and six. I have one. Uh, where's Shelley? Is she here? I believe that the title page is incorrect. I believe it should be January 11th, 2023, instead of December 14th, 2022. These were from the rest of the headers on the on pages three, four, and, and so forth are all accurate with that date, but the title page was wrong. Aside from that, I found nothing in the minutes that required anything. Any questions on any other parts of it? Yes, sir. On page up, page is page title. <clears throat> Some special purpose. What is that? There's not much money in it. But it's, uh... That's the contributions from the districts to capital purchase items of the Woodland Farms and planning on buying. I think there's a vehicle in there. and. And yeah. Further questions, comments? Yes. Move to accept the consent agenda as amended with the uh, minutes heading in it. Second. 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 Trustee Price. Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Abstain. Thank you. Let's see. We are now to item number item agenda item number seven. Receive the regular monthly SJRA Woodlands Division report, including update on the wastewater strategic plan and update on the infrastructure infrastructure funding. Chris, good evening. Good evening. Uh, it's just myself and Jason Williams tonight. Everybody else abandoned us. So uh, on the monthly operations report, I do want to bring up uh, on page 14 an item to chat about. This is a big difference from previous months, so I want to make sure I called it out and let y'all know. So what we're going to be looking at is in the middle towards the right, where it says the rolling 12-month water loss. 
What this is, is every year we do a water off. It's usually done in January after the end of the year for the calendar year. <clears throat> so in doing that water audit, we saw some numbers that were lower than what we had been reporting every month. And so as some of y'all may recall, call, there was a month last month when, or last year when it was like 12% water loss. And so <clears throat> what this is, is there was miscalculation in the actual water loss audit that we did. And it was actually pulling the wrong production numbers. So we're saying we produced more than we, we actually did and sold about the right amount. The other thing is when the AMI meters went in, uh, well, prior to the AMI meters going in, we had an equation that basically said you take 20 days of this production month and 10 from this because the bill wasn't from the first through the last day of the month. Well, that was still in there. So we had to take that out and go back and adjust, actually say just a true calendar month. So that's what caused the issue, the wrong number. So if you go back, you're not going to see the same. They're not going to compete out. But the good thing is we spent about a good week, week and a half collectively looking at this because 4.2% is just phenomenal, to be honest. Great. It's really good. Uh, what we saw, though, is if you do a rolling 12 month for every month from January of 22 to current, actually, it starts in January of 22 at 9%. And as the AMI meters are put in, it does drop down to about 4 or 5%. And so every month, you can see a steady drop. And that's what we were talking to Mike about to see is every month when the meters are put in, you just saw a steadier and steadier drop. So it's terrific. You were around uh, 500 million gallons of water loss. Now we're around 200, 250 million. So if I were to go back and look at those prior 12 month reports, these, these last 12 month reports, you're absolutely right because uh, I made the note here that those loss numbers are nowhere near the average for the year. So, so then, so are you saying that the numbers that were reported were, were in error? The calculation was an error? The ones that came through on this report, they were. Okay. Because we went back and verified, you dig a little bit deeper, is our wells have two different meters. One that is actually on the meter, it's a mechanical register. Then we also have another one that goes through the SCADA system. The one on the SCADA system is we use, that is what we use for regulatory reporting and what we use for the water audit. And this, the ones that were reported, part of the miscalculation, grabbing the wrong data, were the ones that actually sit on top of the well. So I'd just like to follow it up uh, with uh, kudos to uh, everybody uh, involved because these numbers are just unheard of. It's amazing. I, I don't know anybody who reports those kind of numbers. And I would further recommend that uh, we make a, um, a big deal about this and reporting it to the public and taking advantage of this as a teaching moment to even I don't know the vehicle if you want to use the, the, the committee or what. But I think we need to attribute it to the AMI meters as as to how this uh, savings came about, and and maybe translate it to a, to a, say a dollar number. Well, and a little bit more on that. And I agree. Uh, we can get the report showing in January of twenty two. This is what he, yeah, 20, January of twenty two. It was this, and then through the months how it dropped. And if y'all recall, if you call last year, we had talked about reducing the demands by five hundred million. <clears throat> This is a big reason, I believe, while we're not looking to drop another 250 million gallons. That dollar figure, I believe, is one, one and a half million dollars more in revenue that we don't have to raise the rates to cover. So I agree with you. I mean, that's that's per year. Per year, correct. So your ROI just hopefully just got a little bit better. Yeah, so like double. So yes, what sir. would what would the 4.2% number have been three or four years ago pre AMI? Eight or nine. We were averaging. 7% to 9%. And actually, when we did this year's budget, FY23, it was based on the 9%. So we're going to go back and double check what we're proposing for the next year's budget. Yeah. I will tell you, I'm still a little bit cautious. I'm not going to take it down to four. I'm not going to recommend taking four, <laughs> but you may get a seven out of it. Maybe an eight. We'll see. <laughs> we had a report out of MedMud 47 on the AMI project, right? And the, the loss not accounted for my terminology hadn't really come down back then yeah. in that data right so right. and i was like darn it should have right so this is great it ties it all together well so done i'll get that report together we'll try to get in the mud package for next week so all the money yeah. we see and then like education that's a great john you got that on the john john the, the, on the, the communication plan? Plan? Please. yeah you, you were happen to be out of the room when, when chris a great article. drafted you into the conversation yes plan ratio Yes, excuse me, John. Why is that? So it 
I always say all the time, just keep in mind, it's an annual average that we're shooting for, right? right. So, so far, fiscal year to date, we are back on page 14. We are in a 50-50 blend. But one of the concerns that I have, as well as Jason in the back, we watch and see in the winter time your water slows down, right? Because you don't use a whole lot of it. So demands are down, water gets older as it sits in the pipe. The more surface water you have, the older it gets, the more chlorine, the more TTHMs you have. We talked a little bit about that last month. We were going to get back to 50-50, but demands are still down. As you can see on page 14, uh, give or take 250 million gallons of flow. That's not a whole lot of flow going through the woods, right? And so we just didn't want that old water sitting in the pipe and bumping up the TTHMs. So it's a, it's a water policy issue. But the good news is what the plan is during the winter months, it's, if it's down, it means in the summer, instead of being 35%, hopefully we can go to 40 or so. There, I do not have anything on the strategic plan. Just a reminder at the MUDs, we're going to be asking the MUDs to vote uh, next week on the strategic plan, uh, phase two going forward, and nothing on the infrastructure. And also, while I'm at it, I have nothing on the Spring Creek because I'm not dealing with blood control. So, yeah. Jason is here for support, or does he have any part in this? Jason is my good one. He's a good one. He's a good one to have. Very good. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Okay. That, well, that takes care of uh, seven and eight. We're now down to the uh, receive the attorney's report. Brian Yates, please. Yes, sir. Um, I think the thing of a general nature to cover with y'all right now, we're hot and heavy in the legislative session, but nothing to take your interest to report to y'all yet. So we've got overall lobbyists there pretty much full time from now until uh, the end of May. I'm happy to answer questions if y'all have them. Thank you. Okay, agenda item number 10 receive the general manager's report. All right, well, I uh, started on Monday. <laughs> I know what my phone number is and email is now. So, uh, no, we've been just getting uh, getting involved and in, in meeting with uh, Jim and staff, getting to know folks, um, just kind of getting my feet wet a little bit. And I uh, hope to really dive in. I'm already kind of reviewing a lot of things that we're doing internally. And I hope to get uh, more involved with it very soon. Yeah. Well, other than that, I really didn't have any other. Jim, do you anything you care to contribute? I just say that the transition is underway and going well, and, and I expect it to be smooth. Um, I have a question. I think it was answered, but just for everyone's edification, Mr. Wassoff, who was here last month, uh, yes. could you please bring everyone up to date on that? Uh, emailed him some information that he did not have regarding a summary that the uh, Woodlands Water Agency and the San Jacinto Center River Authority had put out several months back on the status of that topic, the, the wastewater odor issue. He attended the MUD 6 meeting that week and it seems to have an understanding of where we are and where we're going and, and what the, the, there's really no immediate solution to the odor concerns that he's expanded. Okay. Uh, did you have a, a distribution of handout that you, you were going to give? Yes, it should be okay. sitting up there, a copy of a letter that we received from the Lonesburg Groundwater District. We already got it. Mr. Lutz, that we wanted to share with the director. Really nothing, no comment on that. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, staff reports, um, um, ad hoc committee reports, uh, public finance committee audit and finance. We met uh, for the first round of meetings with the SJRA under Woodlands Division fiscal year end August 31st, 2024 budget. Uh, and that's a work in progress. Uh, we met. We've had some discussion with staff about a new uh, accounting system, that, a new billing system, and may clear up a lot of the issues on merchant uh, merchant fees. And Paul's going to give a report on the agreements that we have with SGRA as to refunding excess money. Just just to backtrack a bit about uh, okay. what Ron was talking about, uh, Maureen has actually produced. A, uh, a slide report here, about 33 or so pages, 
uh, talking about this potential new system. So rather than doing something with the existing system and then have to either undo it or modify it later, I think we all felt that it was prudent to drive this to a conclusion to either determine whether we're going to use it or not. And then we would be in a better position, I think, to make judgments about these and because they're, they're potentially going to change. So that, that's just to, to wrap that one up. Do you have a date on when that might be uh, finalized? We had talked uh, about uh, the, there's uh, cost savings that need to be identified. There's there's the hard savings and then there's the soft savings. And it's the soft savings that are harder to identify, but there's uh, steps that will not have to be performed potentially with this new system. So that's what has to be worked on. My estimate is you probably need a couple of months to work that out. Thanks. Yeah, they're working on the soft cost right now. They have uh, some numbers all ready to go for us. So that slide deck will change. Yep. Okay. Let's inform. Thank you. Great. So, so is this something that we get insight into? I'm, I don't, I don't know. I have any idea about what size of investment this is. I mean, big system IT changes can wreak havoc on organizations if not done well or not done the right product. So, I'm curious, and maybe not to solve it here, but is is that something that's just happening, and we're going to get a, a recommendation on, or? Um, my recommendation would be that we review as we get more details and more facts, review it with the audit committee, and then at some point come back with the audit committee and the staff recommendation to the full board and, and go okay. through it. Okay. And the item that Ron did mention is that uh, we just formalized the uh, the cash position of the Woodlands Water. It's within the ranges that uh, the board has approved. The audit has been performed and it's without uh, significant adjustment. It certainly didn't affect those numbers. So therefore there will be no cash uh, either refund or call from the mud. So good. nothing, nothing to, to do this year. Thank you. That's very good. Thank you. Okay, Public Education Committee, Trustee Gaynor and John. Okay, uh, we will be uh, meeting uh, on March the 8th um, to discuss uh, findings from SJRA on the new war audit. I mean, it's really good news. And hopefully, by then, we'll have some monetary estimates on, on uh, what the value of AMI metering is and uh, the corrections to the processes for determining the, uh, the loss. Um, the other thing, I'll be sending out a, a email asking members for their input on any items that they wish to have discussed uh, at the uh, forthcoming meeting. Okay. That's what I Excellent, what, thank you. Would you want to make at least a comment that we did have a, a Zoom meeting with Hark and, oh. and we <laughs> talked about the uh, potential partnership. And yeah, that's sort of tangential to the to the letter that was received. Um, there is no partnership. I just want to make absolutely clear that there is zero, don't exist. It's just a, a concept, a concept, a, a light bulb that's sitting up there in, in quasi space. There's no partnership, period. So, and that this is, I don't know where that came from. Okay. Um, but yes, we did indeed have a Zoom meeting with. Um, Park, uh, just to go over some general ideas about what would the form of a uh, INSAR study take, uh, how we could uh, work that. And, and as, as I've said before, we're, we're still at the start of the start in, in this whole process. Uh, nothing has uh, been formalized yet. I will confess I'm working on a, a document to, uh, to provide to Hark and, and uh, Staff and just provide you know some information on where we're at and where I think we could possibly go. Great. Okay. Good. Yes, sir. There were some minor changes to the uh, website. We we anticipate more changes. Do we need to communicate that we are? I'm going to add a pay button and some other features. Can we ask that Mr. Geiger uh, respond yeah. to that or or Jim? 
or Eric? Yeah, we, we are always looking at improving the website. Uh, so it, it, it's subject to be tweaked. Um, did a series of updates, just trying to make it more navigable um, and <laughs> tied into a lot of our marketing that's happening right now, getting uh, residents to place the land that makes sense for them so they don't have to go hunting for information. It's fair presented, put in their lap as it, as it were. Um, <clears throat> we finished those up in the last two, uh, 10 days ago, I guess, and um, keep tweaking. It's, yeah, it's always fluid, always updating, but uh, we think we've got a little bit more navigable site. Nobody noticed. Thank you, John. Thank you, Neil. Uh, personnel committee did meet this afternoon. Uh, we discussed the uh, general manager's special focus items, uh, and it is a work in progress. We've made some additions to it. We'll have a formalized document in a week or so. We can distribute that uh, independently, but it's uh, we're rolling. We're 99 percent done. Just know what we're going to do. We just have to get it in letter form and get it to everybody. So it's very comprehensive. Questions on any of the reports? OK, um, agenda item number 12. Uh, recess to closed session to consult with district attorney dist with the district attorney pursuant to 551.071 Texas government code. Is that OK? So uh, if we could please uh, have the room. Uh, if we're we're going to go into uh, executive session. Yeah. 